Hello and welcome back to the Joyful Soul Creates. Charlotte here with this month's Same Set Syndrome collaboration video. And we have a wild card month this month. So we're revisiting some of the previous brands we've featured and we're also all making shaped cards. For my project, I'm revisiting Create and Inkspire, which is Courtney Krieber's company. And I'm going to be using stamps from her July kit. And I will be making a camera shaped card using the Lawn Fawn camera add-on for the iris die set, but I'm not using the iris this time. So to start off, I'm working out the sizings for my stamped area I'm going to do. I want to have the top and bottom portion of the camera to have this leaf stamped on it. And I'm going to be doing no line colouring with the leafy branch. So I found this snippet of cardstock, which conveniently was exactly the size I needed for both of those pieces. So I just marked off how much space I needed for the top and the bottom and then I'm going to start stamping onto it. As I said I'm using the leafy branch from the stamp set from the July kit and I'm stamping second generation with Just Rust Hero Arts ink. This will give me nice pale lines that will easily fade away when I do my colouring because like I said I want it to be no line colouring. The bottom of the camera quite nicely fits two lengths of the branches so I'm stamping them in from either side and the little piece of paper I'm doing to mask off to get rid of the full strength ink so I can stamp second generation does have some repositionable tape on the back from whatever I used it for before so I did have to use my adhesive eraser because some of that had got stuck onto my panel but it wasn't too big an issue. Before stamping the rest I decided I would actually cut away that portion that's going to be for the bottom of the camera because I'll need it to be cut off when I do the die cutting later anyway. So I was just measuring to make sure that I do allow enough space for both of the pieces I'm going to need and then I will trim that with my Fiskars paper trimmer and return the unstamped piece to my Misty and once again I'm going to be doing the second generation stamping with that leaf stamp and the Just Rust ink. I did first mark on the shape of the camera just very vaguely so that I know where I need to get my images stamped to keep them within the design. The first curve of the camera fit that leaf branch really nicely so I stamped that intentionally like that and then I was thinking I'd add it the same way on the other side but of course it doesn't fit properly flipped around to be coming in from the outside edge. So I changed plans and just stamped it however I felt like. I didn't really have any rhyme or reason at that point to where I was positioning each of the images just making sure they weren't overlapping with each other. With all the stamping done I started on my colouring and I'm using my Spectrum Noir illustrator markers. And I'm going for kind of orangey shades because I want this to look autumnal and I'm using and I'm using a burnt orange as my darkest shade and then golden yellows for my mid and lightest. However my lightest golden yellow was running dry so I did switch to an actual yellow yellow for my lightest colour only to subsequently realise that that was also running dry. I also felt like it was too bright for the look I was going for so I was trying to eke out ink from both the light golden yellow and the light yellow and kind of go over every leaf with both of them and it just really wasn't working. The pens just there's so little ink left in them. I've been saying for ages I need to buy the refills or replace them or something and have not got around to it. I am expecting some new pens actually replacements for these for my birthday which is today if you're watching this the day it went live. So fingers crossed the colours that are almost out will be replaced next time I'm using them which will also deal with the issue with the nibs because I have the older versions of the illustrator markers which don't have great brush nibs whereas the newer version has upgraded ones which work much better. So I'm very much looking forward to getting my hands on those. But for the time being when I was colouring this I just was really struggling trying to get enough ink out, trying to get the colours to blend because the pens were so dry and I didn't want to have to stamp this all out again and I was trying to think what to do and then I remembered I have this light yellow which isn't dry because I never use this colour. I for some reason don't like it very much 
but I tried it and it actually worked. It actually looks okay, I think. It's not exactly the color I was going for, but it it has ink in it, which the other pens didn't, so that's a bonus. So <laughs> I did decide to switch to that and I'm going to speed up even more and just run through colouring the rest of these. So I have the mango as my darkest colour, flicking out from the bottom of each leaf. Switch to the gold, which I extend the flicks from the bottom and also bring in some flicks from the top. And then I use that light yellow to go over the whole thing and that's how I will colour each of the leaves. And the lines do disappear really nicely here, so the no line colouring did work very well. I wasn't sure if this was the right colour of ink to use for this, but as you can see it worked out just fine. I am going to skip ahead and not show colouring the lower portion of the camera because it's just exactly the same way. And then I bought in a brown pencil and I'm going to use that just to trace in the stem of the branch and then also to put some veins along each of the leaves and this just adds a bit of definition to them and I think really makes them look a lot better because I kind of felt like they were looking a bit blobby. I find that with no line colouring everything looks blobby <laughs> until I go in and add more detail with pencil which usually seems to fix it. So that is what I did here, I added in the veins and any leaves that were overlapping each other I very lightly shaded in just to give that definition between the two overlapping areas. There were a couple of places where my ink had gone out past the lines, so I did also, as I was going through doing this, occasionally bring in my blender pen to fix those areas. And whilst I'm finishing this off, as I said, this is for the Same Set Syndrome Hop, which is a monthly hop supporting small companies. This time we're just revisiting past sponsors, so this, as I said, is Create and Inspire. We've previously also had Not Too Shabby and Cat Scrappiness and Joy Claire Designs. Am I missing someone? That might be everyone. I might be missing someone. I might not be able to count, so you'll see the other ones along the way. You can also check back our past videos to see who sponsored us before. As we don't have a sponsor this month, the giveaways are working a bit differently in that there might be giveaways on some of the stops of the hop, but not all of them. Although don't forget that we have the kind of ongoing thing that at the end of the entire collaboration, there will be a grand prize winner of $50 gift card to one of the previous sponsors and that winner will be chosen from all of the comments left on all of the videos over the course of the collaboration. So it's still well worth commenting on all the videos this time. Whilst I don't have a specific giveaway for the same set syndrome hop, I do have my ongoing giveaway this month for my month of celebration, which is celebrating reaching 2000 subscribers and also my birthday, which as I already mentioned is today. Information about that is in the video that I'll link in the top right hand corner. To enter you just need to leave comments on as many of my daily videos this month as you want, but especially that very first video that's the only one you have to comment on. And you then let the raffle cop to know that you have entered, the raffle cop to link is in my description box. And the secret question for today for answering for that giveaway is just let me know if you've ever made a shaped card. And you could also maybe tell me what kind of shaped cards you make. So shaped card just means not a rectangle or I guess a square either. Things that are a bit more unusual. So whilst I was blathering on about all that, I did die cut out my card. I cut out those coloured pieces and then I also used some of the perlized card that had come in the card kit to cut out the background of my camera. And then to turn this into a card, I need to cut a same shaped piece to go behind and I decided the easiest way to do this would just be to tack together the front of the card with a piece of white card and then fussy cut around it. I actually used my craft knife for most of it because I found that easier. And then I will score a flap onto the top so that I can adhere the two pieces together along that flap and that will create the fold of my card. Before adhering this together I repeatedly told myself stamp the sentiment before attaching the two pieces. And what did I forget to do? I forgot to stamp the sentiment before attaching the two pieces. Typical. 
it wasn't a huge problem. I was able to open it up in my Misty and get it stamped down, but I would recommend stamping the sentiment first just because it will make life much easier, but I'm not good at making life easy for myself. I always tend to overcomplicate things. I did consider using one of the Create and Inspire sentiments, but none of them quite filled that circle the way I wanted. So I looked through my stash and I pulled out one from a Love From Lucy stamp set, which really nicely fit within that opening. And I stamped it with Wild Honey Distress Ink because I thought that color fit nicely with the design. I put the little circle, which I can't think what that is meant to be on the camera. Let me know if you know what it is. Um, but I put the gold version of that in to the opening and that sticks through to the inside of the card and I also cut out a gold version of the flash and I think that's the flash and stuck that over the top as well. I then used my adhesive eraser just to fix up any places that the adhesive had gone over the edge and that completed my card which I'm really pleased with. I actually think that looks really pretty and I would quite like to have a camera that looks like that. Don't forget this is part of a hop so check the description box for the next stop. Alternatively if you're watching on my blog it will be at the bottom of the blog post. Don't forget also to leave comments both for the ongoing same set syndrome giveaway and also my own giveaway. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing with your friends and shopping with my affiliate links if you do. Your support really means a lot to me. There are a couple of other videos on screen if you'd like to see more from me straight away. Otherwise, I'll thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye!